Uh, we're going to talk about penetration through bulkheads um, or any structural component in a boat to be completely honest but primarily it's bulkheads. Uh, in this video you'll see me talking heaps about this and pointing fingers around here and looking at holes here and no holes here and why this has to go into holes with some of this stuff here. Lots and lots and lots of info in this one. So where's this gonna go? This replaces that piece of plywood there that was in Anna and I's um, bunk. This is an extension because this is the wing deck here and that old piece of wood extended off here to here so you can put the mattress here but this one does make it a bit bigger so it comes out here all the way out to the side of the wall that's uh, right the bulkhead there that'll run all the way to the edge of the door frame there this is just an extension of the bed so that we can put a mattress across there our hinge has arrived please say why we are using these <laughs> and not carbon fiber because you <clears throat> disappointed a lot of people yeah. not making composite ones and Yes, yes, 100%. You could use composite ones. Yes, and yes, yes. They would be uh, half the weight of the carbon, uh, half the weight of the carbon ones. But these cost me three bucks and I didn't have to build them. And they do really cool things like this. And they cost me three bucks. <laughs> so these, um, we're going to put some fiberglass around here. So we put this uh, release tape on it. So that Dad can put a limit for limit around it, and then these will go into the bulkhead. Well, the glass wall that's running around it, so it'll pop off. That part will go into the bulkhead, so that um, the hole in there for the wires and any hoses will go straight to the um, glass laminate that Dad's made and through the bulkhead. These are the plugs that uh, your dad 3D printed with our Bamboo Lab 3D printer and they are going to be used for their through holes in the bulkhead, yeah. yeah. At 29 and I find myself wondering What did happen to the last 10? I ran away with my life fast forward and never turn back again It's kind of funny that the moment Time, the more we need to set the rewind And our team was the year I had to leave you But now I'm seeing all the signs Is this really happening? I can't believe it's true I'm just as surprised as you Is this really happening? Now we've got to relocate all those wires and all the plumbing so yeah, like Harry was saying, we um, wrap that with glass and then I'll <coughs> push it through the, the hole in the bulkhead. And what that does is that then gives us a structural continuity around the hole. Um, so it's quite important and this is where a lot of production uh, boats fail um, and we won't even start We'll mention the Lagoon Bulkhead Saga disaster that <laughs> everyone went on for, for how long? But the correct way to put a penetration into a bulkhead, and a doorway is actually a penetration, uh, as, uh, as well as you know where all your wires and things go through. They're a penetration. So you're basically making a discontinuity in the fibers of a flat structural component, right? Which is your bulkhead. So if you make uh, discontinuity that load has to then go around that discontinuity because you, you know you've got this hole so the load that's going through all those fibers now has nowhere to go because you've got you know <laughs> you've got to put a great big hole in it so the load that's coming from this panel here needs to get out there and vice versa or the load that's in this side wall here has to get up into all of this structure here and if you've just got a hole there 
there's, you know, the load unfortunately doesn't transfer via air. So what we do is we put um, a, a, an opening that is structural. So in the case of this door, um, this carries some unis in and around it. And that uni turns this into a bit of a beam. So now that this will, this beam carries the load up to this edge and around the flanged area. So the load that's here needs to get transferred into this area here. And of course this area here has a lot more surrounding structure so that we can get lighter and we don't need as much structure in our flange, but we just do it for continuity. Um, for it to take the load from this little beam bit here and push it out and into all of this structure. And this structure can now actually be quite light because there's a lot of material over a large area. It's the same with these penetrations. Um, you can see here, what was done is they just bash a hole through it. And yes, it survived 30 years like this, so why do I have to harp on about going and making it good? Well, because I can make it good, and the potential for Anna and I and the boys, especially now, are pushing the boat a lot harder than it used to be pushed um, or sailed. We're making it lighter, so it will go faster. So we're gonna see um, some sailing loads that it's probably never seen before. So what hadn't failed, may fail because we'll probably sail it a bit faster than it used to be sailed. We're future proofing it. We're trying to future proof it a bit, yeah. Um, so yes, and in particular, the biggest concern is, you know, okay, if we put, push a hole in through here, you can see it's in the middle of a big structural area. So the, the problems of, of the penetration here are much, much, much lower than if I go and we put holes this far away or from edges and in particular, and this is why the lagoons had their failings, is if you look down here where a door edge comes close to a hull structure edge, there's not much material here. And if I go and slam a great big hole in here, if I was to go and put this here, right, there is no more boat structure left here. And this is why people were suffering from failures in their boats, in their bulkheads, because <laughs> they just turned it into Swiss cheese here. So that was one no-no, is, is putting the Swiss cheese here. But okay, if we're gonna put Swiss cheese here, we've gotta put run our services through, we can do it, it's not a problem. But what we have to do... And that is what we're going to do. We yeah. Are, we are going to have to, and you can see all the, the, we've covered, I don't know how many holes there that we've, we've yeah. spent the last couple of weeks filling in. Yeah. And now we're going to put another hole in. Yeah. Okay. And now, if you look here, this was a huge hole here. This was a mahusive hole. And you're saying, well, Shane, this was 30 years with this mahusive hole here, and this door was here, and it was Swiss cheese, and it survived. Yes, it did. Um, and, well, why did our bulkhead not fail? but the lagoon ones fail. Well, there is a massive difference. You can see that our bulkhead is structurally incorporated into the, the way that this bulkhead has been built from original and tabbed and taped in goes to show that that small difference in build technique has a massive difference in life cycle. Um, you can see even with, the, you know, there's a lot of no-no's going on here with this big hole here that wasn't capped and reinforced, it still survived. And this here, this, this region is probably the highest stress concentrated bit because this is the rear bulkhead or the rear beam of our catamaran. And there's the, uh, who is it, the Zingaro guys with their plywood boat. This is actually the region that failed in their boat, in, in this corner here, um, because it was a highly, very highly loaded part of the boat and it's this corner where the hull and the wing deck meet in the back beam here. This corner sees heaps and heaps of welly and there's another one up in the front corner as well. <clears throat> um, so yeah, so you got to take care in this region here because it's a very very highly loaded bit. So for good practice I've 
closed up and taped over um, these things. You know, it's not the most beautiful world thing in the world because, you know, um, I'm not working with them. <laughs> I've tried to tidy up this as much as I can. Uh, and the patching is as tidy as it can be on top of, well, you know, it's early 19s, 1990s French production boat building. <laughs> so anyway, um, so I'm going to go with, you know, best practices. When I put this penetration in, this penetration will go in with double bias uh, capping so that we continue the skin. We create a flange that goes from the skin through the core and into the other side. And they'll actually, I'll do another one on the other side so that we get continuity from the skins through the hole so that the loads can go through. And we actually have also a shear path through the hole that's not the foam so that the, we've got the real strong stuff, the glass, not the foam, carrying the shear loads through the hole as well. And we actually create a hoop around uh, uh, the hole with our uh, composite material. So we've got, we've got a lot of things going on here. We've got shear tie connections, we've got hoop uh, load path things going on, we've got um, skin ties. So just by putting this uh, flange here and tying these skins together, we eliminate three major problems of busting a hole through the bulkhead. So um, it's a very easy solution to a very big problem. Um, but it does take time, and that's why most production boat builders don't do it. Um, normally, if you're building boats new, um, so in boats that I've designed previously, um, a normal practice would be we would identify where um, system runs go and things like this door frame here, instead of making this door frame separate, and actually I'll be doing it when I build the, uh, the, 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 the thing under the floor, the half frame under the floor. Oh, that's a, yeah, yeah. a half frame bulkhead. Right. We actually build the bulkheads with return flanges on them and that creates, so if we're, this, if I was to build this bulkhead, uh, design and have this bulkhead built from new, I'd put a plant on the flat table because this, this bulkhead is built on a big flat table. A plant gets put on that and that then on that plant this skin goes up the plant and creates this flange and this flange carries in it some uni around it and that's really easy to build on the flat table and we'll go through that when I build something on the flat table. It's just like building this flat flange, how this actual flange was built on the table. You actually just build it into the actual bulkhead and then all of these issues go away. Um, you don't have someone just getting a piece of plywood and cutting a hole out of it. This bulkhead is built with all this structural um, components into it, like all these flanges and things like that. But what it does take is it does take some planning. Um, is, is that why, like, it, it, when you talk about the Lagoon bulkheads, that's like the Parlay Revival boys and everything when they start. Yeah. When they so, have. and that, that is just simply the build process from Lagoon. Yes. Yeah. And so why don't they do it this way that you're talking about? Uh, <laughs> well, half no, of no it... No one's called them up on it? Yeah. Well, half of it, they're using plywood bulkheads. Um, so that, that's, that's problem number one. Um, uh, problem number two is for some reason, there's a lot of people um, that don't understand this. People say, oh, it's a race boat thing. Well, it's not a race boat thing. It's a, it's a boat thing. We, we do it in race boats because we need to keep everything light and structurally sound so that we can. But when we started building the boats, it was like, actually, this is a much faster way to build the race boat because now we've done, we've actually made this massive penetration and doorway during the, the process and we don't have to go and post process it. Um, and it's lighter because now in a race boat, I wouldn't have the double up of the bulkhead skin plus my doorway yeah, flange. Or, yeah, it makes sense just to have it all in one piece. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so then if you if you come across the sort of your bulkheads that aren't taped to the to the boat, it's a really simple fix, isn't it? That you don't have to get rid of the boat, you just need to make sure that the those issues are solved? 
Ah, yeah, I like everything. The coolest thing with a plastic boat, you know, and all these boats are plastic boats, um, is you can cut it, grind it, chop it, change it. That is one of the beauties of this. Um, you can chop and change it as much as you like. These are quite cool. You've got an in and you've got an out. Yes. What's that okay. all about? Um, why is there an in and why is there an out? Because, uh, okay, there's, there's a few, now we're getting right into it. There's a few ways to do penetrations through bulkheads. Um, you can get a hole saw, drill a hole, put a carbon tube in it. The carbon tube is a bit long and then you laminate the skin to the bit of carbon tube that sticks out each side, right? Nice, easy way, and we use that a lot. Um, we, that was a detail we used a lot on the last race boat project. Um, in the case of this one, I don't want sticky outy bits coming out of the, the bulkhead. I want it to be quite flush. So to get the skin tie to happen is, I've got a, a, a capped flange that'll go through the bulkhead that way. Then I'm gonna have a bit of glass sticking out the other side. Then I've got to sand it flush. Then I need to do it the other way. So then I need to make another one and have it come the other way. But of course, this one has to fit inside this one. So that's why this one is the outside. Oh, got it, they're different widths. They're different they sizes. Ah, I did not notice that. Yeah. Okay. All right, so one slides inside the other. All right, and we'll, go, and we'll put that on our website so that um, if you wanted to go onto our website yeah, and, and, um, and use that, you can. Yeah. If you don't have access to your own 3D printer or whatever. Yeah. Um. No, no, you finished bashing Lagoon. So I think we're done for today, aren't we? <laughs> Not bashing them. It's just, <laughs> there's so much BS out there. Um, and, you know, look, at, look, not bashing Lagoon. Lagoons are great boats and they're great for their fit for their purpose. The trouble is, is people try to use the boats and they don't understand what the boats are for. Um, that's 99% of the problem. Lagoon, Lagoon's a bloody awesome boat. Oh yeah, I think if I was... Not for me, but for uh, yeah. some people, bloody hell, they're uh, perfect. Yeah. I think, you know, I quite enjoy my cocktails on board my friend's Lagoon. Yeah. No. And in those moments, I would swap with them in a heartbeat. Yeah, abso absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah. But, yeah, the, those boats are fit for purpose, 100%, but they're not fit for our purpose. No. That's the thing. Give it a quick little wipe of fairing. Um, it's basically ready to go. Now, up here, you can see the next one that I've got. Uh, pre-installed, you can see my highly technical clamp piece of foam. Highly technical piece of foam clamp away. There it is, you can see my 3D printed um, plug is um, sitting in there.